Lots of ducks there. Yeah. yeah. I'm Brian Hannell. Yeah. I am now 72 years old. Yeah. At the age of 70, I was diagnosed with frontal temporal dementia. Uh, something that was a completely closed book to me then. Brian Hennell lives with wife June in Stonehouse, Gloucestershire. It's, you know, it's one of those silly things because some things I can remember, some things I can't. There's nothing more frustrating than thinking in five minutes time I must do so and so and an hour later it's not done because I could, couldn't remember to do it. But um, I've learned to live with it now, accept it. There's no going back, there's no getting out of it, so I've got to accept it, otherwise it'll drive me do lally. <laughs> Simple as that. Having come to terms with his condition, Brian now participates in the planning of dementia care services in Gloucestershire. So you're happy that I ring the Alzheimer's Society and say yes? Yeah, no yeah? problem. No problem. Okie dokie, no problem. <laughs> Roughly when? I think the, the popular conception of somebody with dementia is that they should be put away somewhere in a corner quietly and left to vegetate, uh, taken care of, but they weren't capable of doing anything particularly for themselves or to help other people. Um, we decided that it would be a good idea to get into the nitty-gritty of dementia and find out what it is and then see if we can help people uh, come to terms with it. Their involvement began shortly after his diagnosis. In their area, Gloucestershire NHS and Social Services have jointly implemented the National Strategy on Dementia by encouraging stakeholders and those with dementia, like Brian and June, to contribute to planning services. It's absolutely fundamental that we involve people with dementia and their carers. Um, we will then get to hear exactly what services will make a difference to their lives and help them live with dementia better. Brian and June saw an opening to contribute to local services directly using their own experience of dementia. I think that uh, that section, part two, is, is very, very... Getting to know me. Yeah, it's very important. We knew nothing about dementia, but we did a lot of research and we read that the preferred way to help people is to give them the opportunity to prepare a person-centred care plan in later life. It was clear to us that almost immediately after dementia, there was so much information to be captured, to signpost what really makes the sufferer tick? Because maybe the time will come when they can't articulate what's important to me. Brian and June joined Dementia Commissioner Helen Vaughan in developing a Living Well Handbook, jointly commissioned by the NHS and social services and available through memory clinics, libraries and care homes. It contains a whole range of information, including a person's preferences, medication and useful contacts. Yeah, it I didn't come a moment too soon for Brian. And that section, do you remember what what encouraged us to put in the current prescription record? Can you remember? I bet you can't. No, I can't remember it. In fact, but it's very likely me losing one or something Excellent. like that. Yes. <laughs> that was exactly it, it brings together everything. It brings together carers, it brings together the person suffering from dementia, the National Health Service, and it is uh, a one package that you have. You don't need information overload because you cannot handle information overload. You need the right information at the right time. It just sets life out a little bit easier for people that are muddle-headed like I am now. What we do is very much focused on, on what the person with dementia is saying that they need, but we have to take into consideration that everybody's unique and individual, so you, you need to sample a number of um, experiences and, and situations, but it's, it's just an extremely powerful voice. And I think the value is that if you listen properly and you pay attention to what people are telling you, then, then you, you will be giving value for money and not wasting time and money yourself. 
since the development of the Living Well Handbook, Brian and June have kept busy. They work with the Alzheimer's Society. They've taken part in research studies and given public talks. Come on and chuckle. Today, they're joining a focus group to discuss training videos for people in health and social services who deliver dementia care. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, today, I want to get some ideas from you about how we can be much more creative in the kind of training that we do and how we can make sure that... They're brought together by community interest company Innovations in Dementia, who facilitate those with all levels of dementia to be involved with their services. People have got to start learning everywhere that that person sitting there shaking isn't drunk. There could be an illness, do you know what I mean? Group discussion can actually be really helpful in a person with dementia's voice being heard because a group can be a really good way of, of accessing a person's views without it feeling too, too pressurised. I think if you can get sufferers out there saying, please look at us for what we are, we're normal human beings with, with a problem here. And the very simple ways they can help us, like writing notes or dictum or whatever it is, that they can just help us along with daily life. Mm. And that makes a tremendous difference to us, I think. Mm. Yes. It's a case of stand up, be counted, go for it. There are lots of support methods that need to be put into place to make sure that a person can participate and have their voice heard. And that might be some practical tools, um, but it also might be a personal support. Um, and I think a family carer who is there in the background supporting the person to express their views is a very valid um, assistance in that situation. With people with more advanced dementia living in care homes, um, that can be much more complicated because you're working with people who perhaps no longer can communicate verbally, but they do have views and opinions and um, often a need to express those and to be heard. So we'd use more um, innovative techniques, I guess, to, to help people to access their views and to express them. In Brian's case, he relies on his wife, June, to facilitate his participation. She sorts an awful lot out. When we're together at meetings, um, she can prompt me. She knows what's in my mind. So she'll say, well, don't forget what you said the other day, mentioned so-and-so. We work very, very well hand in glove. We have done for 40 odd years. That, that is what happens normally with dementia. When we travel somewhere together, we'll discuss it before we leave. En route, he will say to me, I am going to so-and-so, aren't I? And I'd say, yes, that's right. And as we would enter a building, he'd say, just remind me why we're here. And walking into a room, he would say, right, yes, I do remember we're doing so-and-so. So he uses me as a checklist. I'm really a walking checklist. When we had... My diagnosis. Brian and June aren't stopping soon. They have dates in their diary well into the following year. We started to think, what, what if I can impart my knowledge and assist other people in gathering that knowledge, I, I will think that it's not something that's not worthwhile. I'm actually doing something. I'm earning my bread again. 